Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining another webinar session with Lead Squared. Our topic today is App Store Optimization and we have a specialist in the house who's going to take you through that. The specialist is none other than Akhil Chandra who's already taken a webinar with us. In fact, he took one last year and that was an amazing session. So looking forward to another great session with Akhil. So he's the founder and CEO of Studio Mosaic, which is a full service mobile app studio. And he has a proven record of creating and promoting apps to the top of the store charts. You know, he's credited with creating and marketing 300 plus apps, many of which have been featured by Apple and, over, and has over 150 clients across North America, Europe, Asia, Australia, basically everywhere. So welcome Akhil, thank you so much for joining the session. And how are you feeling today? Thank you so much for the lovely introduction, Shivani. I'm, I'm feeling great. Like you said, this is my second time around with Lead Squared. So I'm pretty excited and I hope uh, this is as big a success as the last time around. I'm sure it will be. So Akhil, why don't we start since it's past three now? Sure, perfect. Uh, so before we dive right in, let me just uh, give everybody who's listening in a quick background about myself. So I've been in the mobile app space since 2010. And uh, three years ago is when I set up Studio Music as a niche uh, boutique app studio where we essentially develop and market mobile applications. Marketing and business strategy of apps lies in the core of, of, of what we do. Now I felt that app store optimization is uh, a, a topic which is, you know, uh, which has a lot of um, notions, uh, maybe right or wrong. And it's something that, you know, has evolved a lot also in the past few years. So when I started out three years ago, most people couldn't even tell the difference between app store optimization and search engine optimization, right? ASO and SEO. So I, I'm, I'm hoping a lot of that has changed today, but even now, uh, people are not quite sure in terms of how ASO really works, what the benefits are, and you know where, what they really need to do. So I felt this would be a great session and an informative one at that. And uh, what I've done is that I've taken the creative liberty to present it like a recipe of mine. Uh, you know, to show the, the secret sauce and the ingredients that go in uh, into creating a great app store optimization strategy. So with that, let's, let's jump right in. Um, I hope everybody can see my screen and uh, yeah, so the menu uh, for today is app store optimization. Uh, so here's, the, here's how Wikipedia defines ASO, which is the process of improving the visibility of a mobile app in an app store. I would actually go one step further and say it's also a process of not just improving the visibility, but also the conversion, uh, which essentially will result to do into downloads and installs. So how I look at ASO is that there are two parts to it. One is the discovery aspect that helps improve the visibility. And the second is the conversion aspect that helps drive greater installs. But why is ASO so important? So as you can see, the statistics say that over 50% or close to 50% of the downloads that happen on, on the App Store today are attributed to search. So search really plays a really big role even today in terms of uh, what sort of downloads you can drive. And not just in terms of organic downloads, but even if you're looking to run any paid campaigns and you're, you're running ad campaigns, the ASO really lays a strong foundation you know, for you to build on. So even when you're running uh, campaigns uh, on ads, etc. you will essentially get the users to come and visit your app store. And that's when they would look at how you presented your app and that will go a long way in determining whether or not they want to download the app. So, so the benefits of ASO, I mean, the, the more the set, the more set, the less they are. Uh, <clears throat> the best ingredients, so, so like I was saying, uh, a, great, a great recipe really for ASO is defined by two aspects discovery and conversion. We'll start in that order on how we can f first build a discovery and get more and more people to discover the app on the store because no matter how great an app you have, if people don't know about it, um, there is no way it's going to be a success. Uh, and once we've defined uh, uh, you know that and I've explained to you how you can drive better search rankings, I'll then go on to focus on the conversion aspect which largely relies on the visual appeal. Uh, that the app has in terms of its screenshots and videos, etc. Uh, so it's simple. Great ingredients make great food, which is which is true in this case as well. 
to begin with, let's let's keep them fresh and crisp. Now, when we focus on the discovery element, the discovery is essentially uh, governed by the kind of quality keywords we have. Uh, but where are these keywords picked up from, right? First and foremost, uh, the name of the publisher, as you all know that the app is published under a name which could either be an individual or an enterprise. So whenever somebody is searching on the app store, uh, there are different fields that Apple or Google would check uh, to see whether the keyword is present in your metadata of the app or not. The very first field that they would check or the, the, the field that has the highest priority would be the name of the publisher. Now while that's great, but uh, the issue really is that once you've signed up with Apple or Google under a certain name, you, you cannot really change it. So even though it has a big uh, sort of influence on your keyword rank, there isn't much that you could do about it because you cannot change your name. But yeah, if you give the thought before you sign up, you could perhaps uh, make some sort of a difference. In terms of uh, the things that are in your control, the, the next most important thing is the app title. So keywords mentioned in the app title uh, are ones that are given the highest weightage, both by Apple and Google. And that is followed by the keyword section. Now Apple uh, allows a 100 character limit in the keywords that they can put up on the app store, whereas Google does not have any separate keyword speed. So what they do is that they allow a large description to be written where people need to fill in their keywords. So in the case of Apple, the title and the keyword section is where they would pick up the keywords from. In the case of Google, it's the title and the description that they would index to search for keywords that people are searching for. In addition uh, to the, yeah. Yeah, Akhil, we already have a question. It's from Siddharth and he says, how do I find out keyword opportunities with specifics like keyword search volume? Exactly, so that's something we're just going to dive into right after this. So I'm, uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure what level of uh, knowledge everybody has around ASO. So I'm just basically setting the base right now. And in the slides ahead, you will see exactly how uh, the concept of keyword volume and difficulty and all of that plays a role in your deciding what keywords you need to select. So I just request Siddharth to be just patient for another maybe five, seven minutes. And we'll get right there in the course of this presentation. Sure, sure. OK. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So, so these are the three, so just coming back to what I was saying, title, keyword, the description are the three areas where you would essentially put your keywords. Uh, but off late category and the ratings and reviews section have also come into prominence. So for instance, if you have a shopping app in the shopping category, uh, Apple would already assign the keyword shopping to your app. So even if you don't mention it in your title or your keywords, you'll still be given the benefit of that keyword in lieu of the category that it's in. And secondly, uh, this is a slightly gray area, but some people say that the words that are mentioned in the reviews uh, uh, that people put out on the store are also indexed and, and they also govern the rank of an app for a particular keyword. So, 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 uh, but again, there's nothing that you can do about reviews because that's something that you know people write or users would write. Uh, but it's a great way for you to actually explore what kind of keywords might or might not work. Uh, okay. Moving on, yeah. We have another one by Sabarish. He says, will search term in AdWords be useful for selecting keywords? So I would put that as an input source. So you could use uh, uh, Google, uh, you know, Google Planner to, to identify keywords that you're searching for. But eventually you need to look at their traffic and difficulty stores on the App Store for you to decide whether you want to select them or not because the scores on, on the Google Planner would show you results for the web search, but not for uh, the App Store. So that's where they would differ. You could use it as an input source to decide and shortlist keywords, but to select, you should check the traffic and volume on the store, App Store, and not on the web. Okay. Yeah. So moving on, uh, the cooking methodology. So good food is often, uh, or most often, simple food. So. Uh, the key that you know is that for selecting good keywords is to keep it nice and simple. So uh, now I'm going to explain how to, now I have an app, I have a great app and I need to start setting up the ASO process. So the first step would be for me to generate a laundry list of keywords, a long list of keywords that I will then put in another tool to check their traffic and difficulty scores. But before I check how good or bad they are, I need to first have a list of keywords in my bucket. 
Now, how do we think of these keywords that we need to, uh, you know, check their scores for? How do we come up with this list of keywords? So, I usually like to start with, with the basics that, it, you know, I like to define what the app stands for, what are the features of the app, how is it different from its competition, what's the user value proposition, and, and a great, uh, you know, way to also look at that is look at some other competitor apps and see what sort of keywords they are looking at. So we'll go step by step. So the first step is first understanding our app. So how I usually like to do it is that I define uh, my keyword thinking process uh, uh, by putting them in multiple buckets. So one is a functional bucket. Now for the course of this presentation, let's take an example of this app uh, that, that I can use. It'll be easier for you guys to understand. So I'm going to take this app called Sustainabody. I hope you guys can see my screen. So uh, this is an app called Sustainabody, which is a health and fitness app that allows you to track your, uh, basically you put in what all you've eaten and it tracks your uh, minerals and nutrients and, and vitamins and calorie intake, etc. And calculates your BMI and, and you know what all are you missing in your food, etc. So it's a health and fitness tracker sort of an app. So let's take this as an example that I can take you know, throughout the presentation and keep telling you how I would approach it. So if I were to look at the functional keywords for an app like this, the function of course would be something like calorie counter, vitamins tracker, minerals tracker, uh, and the likes of those. The second bucket that I would look at is the category that that app is. Now the category of course is health and fitness. So health and fitness related keywords uh, would be the second kind of bucket that I would be looking at. Uh, the secondary and tertiary bucket could perhaps be certain uh, affiliated keywords like if I have a health and fitness app like this that is tracking my calories, then the secondary and tertiary benefit would perhaps be weight loss uh, or you know meal planning, etc. So I basically divide my thinking process by picking a certain direction. So one direction is based on function, the second direction is based on the category, the third function could be based on the secondary tertiary benefits uh, that the app offers. So this helps me arrive at maybe you know 40, 50, 60 keywords uh, which I've listed down. The second step that I would then take is perhaps look at my other competitor apps and see what are what keywords are they using in the description, in the title, etc. To see if in case I missed out on something, and I can add that to the list as well. A great way to also uh, pick out certain keywords is to look at some misspellings that people might do. So, so you have to think of it from a user perspective. I mean, people are on the go; they're quickly tapping out stuff on the store to search. So, for instance, something like weight, right? So you you spell weight as W E I G H T. People could very easily write W I E G H T as well. So that's something you should also look at and include, you know, in your initial shortlist of keywords to check and see that. It, it might be a good keyword. Uh, uh, in way, hi. Yeah. Can I interrupt you there? So we are having questions that are coming in. So uh, mm -hmm. one of them is from Siddharth again and he says, where do I see traffic and volume? So I'm on a slide right now which says the important tools to remember. So right over there the first icon says sensor tower. Sensor tower is a, is a tool that I use to look at traffic volume and difficulty. Another question by Madhu. He has a news app that covers news from 196 countries. Should he mention all the country names in the app description? So the country names actually won't make a difference. He needs to optimize it for different uh, countries. So now the challenging part is that on the app store, you can put out different keywords, etc. based on the different languages available. So he'll have to do it for English, French, Spanish, Japanese, Chinese, if he wants to optimize for those respective countries. And on sensor tower, like I was saying, and I'll show a sample of sensor tower as well later on in the presentation, you can check the traffic and difficulty stores for different countries because the stores are, are country independent, right? The Indian store is different from the American store. So he needs to check, for example, in China, in the Chinese store, what the keyword traffic difficulty scores are based on which he will create his description and title and keywords, which would then have to be uploaded in that specific language on the app store. Only then will he be able to optimize that for different countries. Simply mentioning the country names in the description is not going to help him in any way. Okay. Um, then another question by Sabrish, but I think you're going to answer this anyway. He says, how do I find the competitor keywords? Any tools you would suggest for the app? So I'm yeah. guessing you're going towards that, yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay, another by Bhavna and uh, the question is, can you give an example from real estate? I think he was video. referring, yeah, referring to the earlier example you showed. I think he wants mm -hmm. something from real estate. Sure, so again, I mean, the, the function would be whether it's a brokerage app or if you're looking for homes or if you're looking for clients, so depending on what, what the app is about. The category, of course, uh, uh, would be real estate or lifestyle or those. And the secondary and tertiary could be about buying and selling and purchasing and finding the rates, etc. So it could be it could be any any uh, category of the app. But if you look at the methodology by which you use to get keywords, that would pretty much remain the same. Okay. Uh, then do you want to move on, Akhil, or take all of them now? Actually, let me just quickly move on to. You know uh, uh, the the tool sensed out because everybody I think seems to be very you know inquisitive about how to get the traffic and difficulty scores. So so why don't I just quickly move on to that? Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah. And yeah. If some unanswered question, then you could ask me ask me that. Sure. Sure. We we can do that. Let's just move forward now. Yeah. So so just completing what I was saying, where I'm creating my initial list of keywords before I go ahead and check their traffic and difficulty scores. I was explaining what are the different ways in which you can brainstorm and create this list of keywords. So I mentioned looking at competitor keywords. I mentioned thinking about it from a functional category and you know, tertiary secondary perspective. Uh, another great way is to actually go on Google or even the Google Keyword Planner, like somebody asked earlier, and look at and enter a keyword and look at the related searches or the related keywords that Google throws up, and include those in the list as well. Another great way would be to go to uh, the App Store actually, and you can look at the trending searches that are happening. And that gives you an idea of the keywords. And also, like in our case, it's a health and fitness app, the example that I gave. So even if you just punch in health, for instance, on the Apple App Store, it shows you suggestions already uh, uh, which are coming in from the keyword that you put in. Now, this is, this is assumed to be based on the searches which are happening on the App Store. So this can also give you a great idea in terms of what are the keywords that you can include before you go ahead and check them on the App Store. In terms of tools, another uh, a great uh, tool for you to check is this one called One Look. Now, One Look has a co concept of reverse dictionary that I'm clicking right here. So, for instance, if I enter the word fitness, it tells me synonyms uh, for this particular word. So, these are again, this is again a great tool for me to look out for keywords that I could possibly put in. Right? I mean, you mentioned real estate, so I, I could put in real estate as well. And there will be keywords like real door, property, condo, mortgage, brokerage, foreclosure, estate. So these are again, you know, some, some insights that they could get in terms of keywords that they should check, you know, before they obviously decide whether they want to use them or not. Another great tool is called App Annie. Now App Annie gives you all app store related information in terms of ranking and uh, downloads and all of that. And they also basically show you reviews for all the apps. So uh, remember earlier on I was saying that if you look at reviews, you could actually get a lot of insight in terms of how people think. Because often the way they write reviews is also the way they'll be searching for apps, right? So the way they would describe your app in the review could give you insight in terms of what keywords you should be looking at. Um, coming back to the presentation, so uh, I've created this list of keywords. Uh, I've created uh, a, a long list and what I also like to do at this stage is to just segregate single word keywords with keyword phrases because uh, this is this is a very important part because often people only look at single words you know for which they check their traffic difficulty scores but you actually are able to um, derive much greater benefit if you're targeting phrases so two word phrases or three word phrases like for example fitness tracker as opposed to just fitness or meal planner or weight loss program, right? So if you're able to get uh, traction for these phrases, you could actually derive a lot more benefit. And now let's jump into the meat, which is to get traffic and difficulties first. Now before I jump into Sensor Tower and let me answer one question about, about how to check competitor keywords. So Sensor Tower has this section called Keyword Spy right here. In Keyword Spy, when I enter an app's name, for example, you have already entered Calorie Counter, it will show me what keywords this app is using. So this is the way I can actually determine what keywords competitor apps are using. Right? 
and uh, the other important thing that I'd like to also mention right here is that the foundation of ASO is built on three pillars, right? The first one is keyword traffic. So uh, for those of you, you know, who are not aware of this term, keyword traffic essentially means how popular this keyword is, right? What kind of volume of searches uh, are there on a, on, a, on a regular basis on the app store for this particular keyword. So keyword traffic tells me how popular this is, which is obviously very important because I only want to target keywords that are popular. The second pillar is difficulty, which means how many other apps are using the same keyword. So if the difficulty is high, obviously it's tougher for me to rank for it because there are already enough and more other apps out there that are using the same keyword. So obviously traffic should be high and difficulty should be low as a thumb rule. And the third and the most important element is called relevance. Now, traffic and difficulty scores are something which can be quantified and tracked numerically. But relevance is a qualitative uh, concept. And that's something that you as an app owner will need to figure out whether how, how relevant is this particular keyword for my app. For example, if I'm only doing calorie counting and I start uh, targeting keywords which is, a, which is based on diet planning, Right, you, it might seem connected, but it's not going to get me anywhere because my app is not a diet planning app; it's a calorie counter app. Right, so so relevance plays a very important role, and it's a combination of traffic, difficulty, and relevance that will eventually make me decide what keywords I want to select. Now, uh, back to Sensor Tower, there's a section called Keyword Research. I can enter any keyword or keyword phrase here, and it shows me the actual results for this on the App Store along with the traffic and the difficulty. Uh, now let me tell you there are a lot of tools out there. Sensor Tower is one. There's another one called Mobile Action. There's another one called Mobile Dev HQ. And there are many more. I personally find Sensor Tower the best and the most accurate, which is why I'm recommending it. Also, it's very easy for you to change the parameters on Sensor Tower. So, I, so somebody asked me about countries. So if you look at the top right here, I've selected US as the country and the Apple App Store. You could change this to Google Play Store and any other country that you want and you will get the traffic and difficulty scores specifically to that particular country and that store. So in somebody mentioned real estate as well. So if I put real estate as, as a phrase uh, and this is the US of course, it seems to be a great keyword combination because the traffic is 5.3 and the difficulty is 3.6. Now, let me also spend a couple of minutes to define how do you evaluate these scores. Now, in Sensor Tower, they give a ranking on a scale of 1 to 10, right? Now, typically, as a thumb rule, I would say any traffic that has a score of about 5 is considered good. So, anything above 5 would be great. For phrases, uh, typically, you would not get that higher traffic. So, if real estate has a traffic of 5.3, it's phenomenal. Otherwise, single keywords would typically get traffic upwards of 5 and phrases would get anywhere between 3 to 5. The thumb rule is that your difficulty should always be less than traffic. As long as that is happening, it's a great keyword. Because if difficulty is higher than traffic, that means the popular, it's not very popular and it's very difficult. So it doesn't make sense for you to select that keyword. So uh, about 10 minutes ago, I was explaining how you create that laundry list of keywords. You take those keywords and you put them in an area called keyword ranking right here and you could start putting in all the keywords you know that are there that you thought of and you click on track keywords and it tells you your traffic difficulty how many iPhone apps results would you get so if you search for example for estate you'll see 9400 apps listed as, as the search results. So all your 150, 200, 300 keywords that you've selected, you will put them in sensor tower and you will get their traffic and difficulty scores right here. From here, I would then typically copy it and paste it in an Excel, which is something that I'm going to show you right now. So here, if you see, I have a sheet called reference apps. So these were all my competitor apps that I was, this, which is my starting point. I looked at the keywords of these competitor apps did my own brainstorming, added my own keywords, and I came out with this final laundry list. So these are all the keywords that I have, which are about 159 right here, where I put the traffic and the difficulty. I have a second sheet that I've created for keyword phrases, 
because like I was telling you, phrases uh, get a lot more prominence than single, single word keywords. So here I can see what are the popular phrases that I can use. And the benefit of course of phrases is that not only I get the benefit of the phrase, but also the individual keywords as part of the two word or the three word phrase, right? Now this is basically my raw material. These are the things that I'm going to look at. The element that I've now added is called difference. So I've subtracted difficulty from traffic to get my difference score. Now obviously the higher the difference score, the better it is. Now this, this helps me basically break the clutter and, and try and shortlist the keywords that really matter, which are really good quality. Based on this difference, I've sorted it from high to low. And now I would go over each keyword and try and see if it is relevant to me or not. Right? So for example, in this health and fitness case, food tracker would obviously be relevant, calorie counter would be relevant, vitamins tracker would be relevant, weight loss would be relevant. So I can just keep marking them as XXX and bring out my shortlist in terms of the keywords that I want to now have in my consideration set that I can use before now finally making my title and description. Uh, Shivani, are there any other pending questions that you want to ask me that haven't been addressed so far? Uh, there are quite a few, Akhil. Starting with Manish's question, he says, does Google Analytics have any feature to track traffic to the app? No, it doesn't. Okay. Um, next question by Abhishek. Uh, he says, all of these tools are paid tools, the one that you were showing. So he says, are there any free tools available for keyword volume and difficulty? So all of them have a free version, free trial version, which is obviously very limited. Uh, so if you're looking to use it extensively, I would recommend going in for the paid version for, for a couple of months at least and then seeing if it works for you, then you could continue it. But I mean, no good things in life come for free, yeah? so <laughs> you should be prepared to spend some money. <laughs> okay. Uh, next question by Puneet. Uh, she says, can I show any offer or promo codes in app description? Uh, yes, you can. You can do that. But that's not going to help your search. Uh, discovery to go up in any way. It's going to help you in your conversion because if somebody discovers your app and then sees that there's a free a promo going, then they might be incentivized to download. Right. And all of you, uh, if you ha if you have any follow-up questions, please do ask. Uh, moving on to Siddharth's question. He says, are backlinks a ranking factor for Google Play Store apps? So up to last year, they were not. But this year, uh, uh, there seem to be some rumors that uh, uh, if there are some backlinks, backlinks especially from uh, coming in from, from, from mobile search, then they might have some bearing in the quality score. But uh, it's something which is slightly in the gray area because obviously Google, Apple and Google don't come out with the algorithm that they have. It's, it's based on hit and trial that you know experts in the field keep trying and they keep discovering. Uh, as of now, there is no empirical evidence that says that backlinking will help you improve your keyword ranking. Okay. Uh, another question from Mansi from Dr. Insta. Uh, she says, does using highlighters in description help in ASO? Like using stars, mentioning offers? So like I said, it's not going to help your search discovery in any way whatsoever. It's like saying, you know, once somebody's reached your store, then you're giving them all the bells and whistles and incentivizing them to you know, buy your product or download your app in this case. So in the conversion part, it might help if they actually read your description. But as far as discovery goes, uh, which is what we've been discussing so far, it will have no bearing unless it's a great keyword that they're using. Okay. Um, I think we can move on for now, uh, Akhil. Cool. Uh, so, yeah, so just coming back to the Excel uh, that I was showing you, so, so this is basically my worksheet. So this would take me a few hours to f first prepare. Uh, uh, just to quickly summarize, you know, I, uh, how I create is to have my reference apps that tells me that I'm on the right track. I'm looking at the right set of apps. And then uh, uh, sort of spreading it out between phrases and single word keywords and then sorting it based on traffic and then their difference to finally then select or a subset of you know of these 150 200 keywords and bring it down to about 30 40 which are in my final consideration set and once i have these i would then start filling up all the fields depending on whether it's apple or google 
Now, on Apple, for example, so this is one that I filled up for Sustainer Body, which is the example uh, that I've been running with. So the first thing that I would like to do is fill up all the fantastic phrases and put them out in the title because in terms of uh, priority, uh, after, like I mentioned, your publisher name, uh, a presence in the title will give you the highest points followed by the keyword section, right? Now, in title, there is a concept of exact match. So if you're targeting a phrase, like, for example, food tracker, right? Uh, which is a great keyword and it's mentioned in your title in the exact same format as food tracker you'll get you'll, you'll be given more preference than another app uh, which probably has food in the title and tracker in the keywords right likewise uh, there is also a pair here that I'm targeting called vitamins tracker but because vitamins and tracker has a word called food in between it's a match but not an exact match now the reason why I chose food tracker or over so I could have mentioned uh, vitamins and food tracker or food and vitamins tracker, right? The reason why I chose vitamins and food tracker is because food tracker is a better combination than vitamins tracker, clearly, right? If I go back to my Excel, that's what it will show you. Uh, usually also when I start creating a name, obviously the first word is the name of the app. That follows for, is followed by either a colon or a dash. And then I like to create some sort of a descriptive text that makes sense, that is grammatically correct English and is also a great keyword combination that is filled with pairs. So if you look at this particular title that I made, uh, you have weight loss as, as a pair, you have vitamins tracker, you have food tracker, you also have weight tracker as an added benefit. And if you look at the keyword section, the kind of keywords I put in, so there are calories, there's counters. So uh, the more pairs that can also be made are calories tracker, calories counter, minerals tracker, uh, meal planner, meal tracker, diet tracker. So between your title and keywords, there are you know many combinations possible of phrases and single words which have arrived at based on this empirical evidence which is of traffic and difficulty scores. And how you position them finally in the title is what's going to uh, basically make the difference. This was the case of Apple. In the case of Android, I have, I have another app that I've put in. Now here, uh, we have the title which is only 30 characters. Then we have a short description and a long description. Uh, in Android, of course, like I mentioned, there is no separate keyword section. The thing to be noted here is that uh, once you fill in your title, which is hardly anything because it's just 30 characters, you then have a short and long description where you have to stuff in your keywords. And on Android, if you want to rank for a particular keyword, you need to mention the keyword a minimum of five times, right? In fact, the recommended number is five times. They say that beyond five, it's not going to get you any additional benefit, but you need to have it at least five times for you to derive benefit from it. And if uh, the keyword is something that you're not uh, focusing on a lot, then even three times is okay. So three to five is a sweet spot. And if you really want to target the keyword, you have to mention it five times. Uh, before you can derive benefit. Mentioning it once is not going to get you anywhere. Uh, typically how I go about you know writing a description for Android is that I would first just write a great uh, you know description that, that describes the app really well in a, in a brief and succinct manner, manner and then I would start lacing in the keywords and start creating sentences that allow me to add those keywords because if I go the other way around if I start with the keywords first and start making sentences from it it gets a little difficult for you to creatively write something that makes sense because you'll often then be just repeating yourself. So, so this in a, in a nutshell uh, was how I would arrive at my app store optimization strategy and my keyword strategy. The last step and the, probably the most important step is for you to track it. So all the keywords that I have targeted on iOS or on Android need to come out on an Excel sheet. Uh, where I have all the possible single keyword and uh, keyword phrases of two words and three words listed down that are that are being targeted from the keywords I've selected and then I need to start uh, putting in what my app's rank is for them and I should track it you know every couple of weeks to see how my app's performance is going over time and ASO is anyway an ongoing process so say for instance of the 50 keywords or keyword combination that you're targeting perhaps 30 and 35 are working for you and 15 are not. So in the second iteration, you need to then look at, you know, replacing some of those with something else and seeing what is working for you and what's not. Uh, so with that, I'm coming to a close to my first part, which is 
focusing on discovery and keyword optimization and how to select keywords and based on those keywords, how to put them in my title and description. Any any questions uh, on this part? Pani? Yeah, Akhil, actually there are several questions, a lot of questions coming in. Great. So Good. maybe if you, do you want to go through the presentation or do you want me to start asking you straight away? Uh, so actually the second part of the presentation is now more about the screenshots and the icons. So if they have questions on keywords, it's better to answer them right now. Okay, okay, I'll do that now. So, uh, first question again, Sabrish, he says, in my Play Store, there is, in Play Store, is there a, any limit on the same keyword that could be repeated? No, no, like I said, you have to mention them five times. So, and, and uh, if you're just stuffing keywords without making proper English sentences, then you will be flagged down. But as long as it's a, you know, proper grammatically correct English sentence and you're mentioning the keyword five times, there's no problem, there's no limit. There is, there is no policy of Google that says that you cannot do it. And, and like I said, for you to optimize the keyword, you have to mention it five times. Right. Uh, next question from Rahul Matthew, who, by the way, took our webinar last time. So, hi, Rahul. Good to see you back. Um, so, he says, would the steps that you take to optimize your app on App Store differ from other platforms like Salesforce App Exchange? Yes, completely. So first off, uh, I've never uh, done any optimization for Salesforce or any other platform. I've only done it for the Apple App Store and the Google Play Store. So I could just talk about them because that's what my knowledge is limited to. Okay. Uh, moving on to Prasanna's question. Uh, he says, how do we integrate mobile app plus website analytics? Is the answer is Google Analytics? Mobile app? He wants to integrate mobile app and website analytics. Yes, yes, I think that's what I'm getting. That's his question. Okay, I don't understand what you mean by integrating them. I mean, your analytics would differ for both platforms. If you're asking me if there is a single tool that does it, uh, then the answer is uh, Google Analytics. Uh, there's another one called Localytics. Uh, so these are mixed panel. So these are a few tools that provide analytics for both websites and apps. For apps alone, I would say there's one called Flurry, which is really good, and Localytics. These two are the best. Um, okay, so this question is not entirely related to keyword, but uh, I'll still go ahead. This question is from Sri. He says, how effectively can we use social media for app promotion? How can we optimize App Store for search engine indexing and organi organic rankings? Do we need marketing APIs integration for app promotion on various social media and other platforms? What are the other best approaches to promote app and make it a brand? So, so let's go let's go one by one I think the first question was how do we promote an app on social media right yes yes how do we effectively do that on social media app promotion hmm. Hmm. so app promotion on social media I mean so uh, so on social media let's let's look at Facebook and Twitter now now Facebook particularly has become really strict with its algorithm and now even if uh, whatever content that you post on your page on your app page is not going to be visible to even all the people who like the page. So forget somebody's not like the page. So if you're looking at acquiring new users on using social media, that's not going to happen because uh, in any case, the people who like your page are ones that are probably already using your app. That's why they like your page, right? So new user acquisition is very tough unless you're spending money on Facebook as an ad network and as a user acquisition network. So uh, you should use social media more as a customer engagement platform customer addressable platform to spread some awareness about how to use your app better, perhaps even to improve retention. So that's something that you could use Facebook for on your page by interacting with the consumers. But if you're looking at acquiring more installs, then, then the best way to go about it is to be spending money on the Facebook ad network and doing a paper install campaign to, to get installs. What's the second question, Shivani? The next huh. one was, how can we optimize App Store for search engine index and organic rankings? So that's something that I've just described in the last 20 minutes. Yeah, yeah, he actually that's posted the question while you were talking about that, so that's my bad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then the next one is, do we need marketing APIs integration for app promotion on various social media and other platforms? Uh, so as long as you are just promoting the page, there is no integration needed but if you want the social media to talk to your app in terms of like if you're running an ad campaign and you want analytic, analytics etc then yes the integration needs to happen but the integration doesn't happen through APIs they happen through SDKs 
so they will have to integrate the facebook sdk or the twitter sdk or the google adwords sdk if they're looking to promote uh, uh, their app on these networks there are also some third party tools available uh, uh, one one of them is called apps flyer so just integrating with apps flyer will allow him to run campaigns across all social media and he will not have to do individual integrations with each of them all right uh, moving on to Shilpa's question, she says we can use Google Keyword Planner too, right? I mean that tool also tells us monthly searches and Yeah, but that keywords. is telling you monthly searches of the web, not of the mobile app. So like I said earlier, you can use it as an input mechanism to create your keyword list, but your selection needs to happen based on the traffic and difficulty scores that are being uh, presented to you for the app store and not for the Google web search because that's website not mobile app. Okay, uh, another question from Simran. She says, is the SEO and ASO similar in terms of logical flow like keyword research and link building? Actually no, except uh, apart from the broad concept, they're completely different. I mean, I'm, I'm assuming he knows how SEO is done which is technique, which is a little more technical in nature and there's both on page and off page, right? Whereas on, on the app store, app store optimization is purely about the metadata that you put in. So they're actually quite different. Okay, uh, moving on to Puneet's question. He says, are you suggesting we keep a small app name which gives us scope to use more keywords? Yes, yes, that, that, that is a good idea because if you have a shorter name, then you have more space left to put in other better keywords. Absolutely. But then again, okay. I mean, it's a, it's a brand question. So beyond a point, you cannot be focusing too much on that. Your brand name is your brand name. Any other questions, Shivani? Yeah, I think we are good to move on right now. The rest don't seem to be about uh, keywords, actually. OK, so those perhaps we can take at the end of the presentation then, if they're about yeah, generic yeah. marketing queries and all. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So, so I think the first part, uh, I hope, uh, you know, has been able to address how you can focus on the discovery part and get you know get your app discovered for more and more keywords and 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 the real proof of that will be that on both the app store and the play store it tells you how many store views you get and then in turn how many downloads you get right so if your ASO is really effective you should start seeing your store views go up uh, a key element is that it's very difficult for you to optimize for a specific keyword and say that I want to be rank one for this keyword like you would do an SEO Right? So in ASO, that it doesn't work like that. It works on a more holistic strategy where your organic discovery goes up, so your store views go up, but you cannot really target a single keyword and say, I want to be ranked one for that. That's next to impossible. Now moving on, uh, you got your app discovered. Now it's a great app. It's, it's starting to get discovered. More and more people are seeing it. Your store views are going up. Now how do you get people to download it? Right. Uh, just like a great dish, it's all about the presentation because you eat with your eyes first. So what's the first thing that people would usually look at when your app is discovered, right? Icon obviously is the first thing they'd see, followed by screenshots uh, and perhaps the video. So uh, on iOS, typically you see the first two screenshots in the search results. Uh, on, on Google, there's a list view and then you click on it and then you would see the entire app page. Now typically people would not read the description or not. They would look at the icon, the screenshots and the video. Right? And based on that they would, they would then decide whether or not they want to download the app or not. So discovery like I said is just one part. Getting them to download the app is another ball game altogether. So what are some best practices that we can look at? Now icons typically you know, uh, are three kinds that, that people would use. So, so one is based on initials. So if you look at some of the samples that I put in like Airbnb, Flipboard, Facebook and Skype. So they've taken their initials and they've made a nice attractive icon out of it. Some of them are descriptive like YouTube has the one that, that's the sign of the play button which is for video. WhatsApp has the one for messaging. Google Maps, this is a location based thing. There's Instagram. So there they're trying to associate the action uh, with their brand, right? That YouTube stands for videos, WhatsApp stands for messaging, Google Maps stands for location, etc. And then there are some that create unique symbols like you have one for Hotstar or this one is for an app called Clear or there's Twitter uh, right here or, or um, InShots. 
So, so these are icons that are very unique symbols that have been created by the brand. But in a nutshell, what's important is to keep it, uh, you know, simple, not too cluttered. Don't get a lot of things going on in the icon where you added a lot of elements. Uh, the, the best use case is that it should symbolize and signify what your app stands for in a very simple and succinct manner. So the very the first time I look at it, I should, it should be nice. It should be something that makes me want to move on and not, you know, making me trying to figure out what is this really. Right. In terms of screenshots, now, like I was mentioning earlier, very few people would actually read the description. They would expect the screenshots to tell them what the app offers. So instead of putting the actual screenshots of the app or the screen grabs of the different screens of the app, I like to treat my screenshots as a marketing storyboard. Right. So as you flip through the five screens one after the other, uh, they should come out with a story and very succinctly encapsulate exactly what the app's offering is, right? So, so, so here is one which is a very fancy way of showing things, which is basically it's saying that you can share and create videos, right? The moment you look at it, you understand that, and they've done it in a very fancy way that makes you feel that okay, if the screenshots are so nice, maybe the app is also you know pretty interestingly designed. The second uh, thing to, uh, or the second concept that we can see is uh, that in, in these five screenshots that you see, I like to use my first one as a summary screenshot. Uh, so uh, if you look at it, the first one, so th just to tell you a bit about the app. Now, this is an app called Annex that helps travelers meet locals. Uh, so they can go to a new tourist destination and they can explore places or experiences. Uh, by helping native people or locals help them out, right? So the first screenshot, I would like to keep it as a summary screenshot that tells them do as a local does. So it's showing a guy with a backpack. So it's about traveling and holiday. And then the remaining four, I like to pick out one or maybe maximum two features and then just focus on them. So then what happens is that the first screenshot is a nutshell or a single line definition of the app. And then the other four uh, bring out the, you know, one or two features in each of them that together then tell the user a story in terms of what to expect. So here you can say you can explore fun activities, you can search and find people, you can contact them, and you can even register as a local pro yourself. So, so this is a nice, uh, like a thumb rule that I like to follow in, in all the screenshots that we make. So use the first one as a summary, as a nutshell screenshot, and the use the remaining four to then talk about the different features you have. Obviously showing the app screens are important, but it's also important to make them look good, add some text so they tell a story rather than people just trying to figure out you know, what the screen has. And then the third element uh, would be the videos. Uh, now, as you can imagine, the videos that app review videos that you can make on both iOS and Android are very different because the guidelines are very different. Uh, but it's said that, uh, that the, the videos are known to increase your conversion rate by as much as 80%. So, so the importance of videos is, is pretty high. And, and just to clarify conversion rate, I mean the number of installs divided by the number of store views. So that tells me what my conversion rate is. So if there are 100 people visiting my app and there are 30 people downloading it, my conversion rate is 30%. So the conversion rate I've seen that tends to go up when there's a nice video uh, also uploaded on the app store page that people can quickly look at. And you know, in 30 seconds, they can get to know what the app is about. And it also tells them about the credibility of the app owner, right? You know, he's made a nice video and, and this is what the app looks like. So if it's, if it's credible, if it's attractive, there's a higher likelihood of him going and downloading the app. Um, what I was also saying is that there's a big difference between the Apple App Store uh, preview video guidelines and the Android uh, Store video guidelines. Uh, on Apple, you know, there's just 30 seconds and you cannot show too much, you just have to restrict yourselves to the screens of the app. Uh, this is a sample video that I'm showing you that will give you an idea of what all Apple allows and how you can make it appealing for users. So this is for iOS. On Android though, there are no guidelines. You can have uh, you know, any lens, you can have animation, you can have voiceover. 
and a lot of that. So this is an example of an Android video that we had made that you can take a look at. Do you want an easy travel planner that navigates you on the go? Use My Trip Amigo. Often planning a trip can be pretty harassing. You can spend hours browsing multiple websites to find the best way to spend your time in a city. And using your phone for navigation can be pretty expensive. Introducing My Trip Amigo, a simple to use website and app driven by our proprietary back end algorithm that plans trips easily and navigates on the go. My Trip Amigo incorporates your personal preferences on places to see and time allotted across different cities to come up with the most optimized itinerary in just a few seconds. With the My Trip Amigo Android app, can update your itinerary on the go and get directions on your multiple point itinerary. It also provides an accurate offline navigation feature so you don't have to worry about high mobile bills or handling city maps. And the best part? All this comes for free. Visit MyTripAmigo.com to find out how you can revolutionize your travel. Cool. So those were examples of you know two videos just to show you what's the difference between you know, iOS and Android when you're going in to create them. Uh, so that's the bit about the conversion part and um, I think this is perhaps the last slide where I just like to summarize the difference between your strategy and your limitations for App Store and Play Store. So to begin with on the App Store like I said you have a keyword field that allows you to put in 100 characters. On the Google Play Store there is no such keyword field. You have to stuff in your keywords at least five times to be ranked in the description. On Apple however the description is not indexed. You, uh, you can put in whatever you want in the description but those keywords are not indexed for search. Secondly, the title on Apple allows you 50 characters. So that's still decent space. They used to be 255 earlier and then about 6-8 months back they reduced you to 50. Uh, on the Play Store it's just 30 characters. On Apple the screenshots are limited to 5 whereas on Android you can actually have 8 screenshots. Uh, in videos also there's a big difference like I said on Apple you can just have a 30 second video. Uh, where you can just show the app screens and some text. You cannot show hands or devices or faces or people. There's nothing that you can show. Whereas on Android there is no time limit or guidelines as such. You can basically put in whatever you want. And the biggest issue or the biggest challenge on the Apple Store is that you can only change your keywords and screenshots and video when you're posting a new version update of the app. Because otherwise those fields are all locked and you cannot change them unless and until you're posing, posting a version update. Whereas on the Play Store, you can change anything on the fly whenever you want. Uh, with that, I'd just like to end by saying that, you know, this is, this is my recipe and my two cents on how you can uh, basically try and attempt to create a great App Store optimization strategy. But at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's your app. You know, you know what the user segment is. You know how you need to pitch it. And you need to create your own recipe in terms of the keyword combination that you should be looking at or the way you present, it, present your screenshots or video in a, in a creative manner that would encourage users to uh, not just discover but also download your app. That's it. Thank you. Uh, I think Shivani, we can have some questions now. Yeah, there are a lot of questions waiting for you. Um, starting off with Shruti's question, what is the role of visuals for increasing traffic on the app? None. Zero. Like I said, it's uh, discovery is keywords, conversion is visuals. So uh, if you have better visuals, you have a higher chance, higher chance of getting more downloads from the discovery that is already there. It's not going to help you in discovery, it's going to help you in conversion. In getting more installs from your current, it's like on the web world, right? There are visitors and then there are leads, right? People who sign up. So likewise, uh, your discovery is going to be impacted by keywords that gets you store visitors. Uh, but whether or not they install the app is dependent on the visuals. Okay, uh, another question says, uh, he says best platform to run app install campaigns, uh, Google AdWords or Facebook? Uh, so there is no easy answer, it depends what country, what category. I mean for example Facebook doesn't allow you to run uh, promotions for dating apps, right? So, so then Facebook is not an app option at all. Uh, but overall, in my experience, I would I would rate Facebook a little uh, higher, uh, purely because of the quality of installs that I'm able to get from Facebook. I, I tend to see that the retention rates of those users tend to be better. So uh, uh, the rates, though, are almost the same between Facebook and Google. 
uh, but a very good quality ad network that has recently been introduced is the Apple search ads. The issue is that it's only limited to the US right now, it's not in India. Uh, but Apple search ads are great, they're like the SEM equivalent of the mobile app world. Okay, uh, moving on to Rishabh's question, he says, does app usage and user behavior, like the amount of time spent and the number of times the app was used, affect the app store rankings? Yes, yes they do. So, uh, firstly, what all goes into impacting an app, so there are firstly there are two ranks, right? One is the category rank, which means where is my app ranked in my category or in the overall rankings, I'm ranked at 5, 10, 20. And the other is my rank for the keywords that I'm targeting. Right? So up till now we were focusing on the keyword rank. How am I able to rank better for certain keywords that help me get more and more store views. But when you look at the category rank, there are a lot of factors that influence it. Uh, some of them we know, some of them we perhaps don't know because it's a black box and neither Apple nor Google reveal it. So some of them are definitely usage, the uninstallation rate, the session length, the ratings and reviews and perhaps a lot of other things but then they are not in the hands of, you know, from, from a marketing standpoint. That is more of a product specific thing that you need to then improve in terms of retention rates. Alright. Uh, what is con considered as a good conversion ratio? This is by Amish. Sure. And how long should the video be? So for Apple there is a limit of 30 seconds, you cannot exceed it. For Google I would not recommend for you to make anything beyond one minute. Uh, 40 to 45 seconds would be a nice sweet spot. In terms of a good conversion ratio, this varies from category to category. Typically, like for instance, for games, the conversion rate uh, uh, tend to be lower. But somewhere around 40% is considered really good. 30 to 40% is decent. Below 25% is bad. Okay, you have your statistics there. Uh, moving on to Amit's question. How much can mobile push notifications about offer and blogs help in app retention? They, they can as long as they are not a nuisance, right? I mean, at the end of the day, if you are adding value uh, uh, to the person that you are reaching out to, they would like to come back to your app and check it out. But if you are inundating them with uh, offers and deals that they are not interested in, then it could result in them, in, in them completely deleting the app. So it has, it's a qualitative answer. I mean, you have to look at how you are doing it at what point are you reaching out to the person and with what message. Uh, that will really determine uh, whether the person will come back or not. But it's definitely worth a try if you can pull it up well. It's, it's definitely a good option to do. Okay. Uh, another question by Amish. He says, do you think having a separate landing page, having a separate landing page on web and driving traffic through them to the app store will help in discovery? So, uh, we had some statistics earlier on that said that more than 50% of the downloads that are happening are happening from app store search, right? The number from downloads happening from web search was perhaps at some 6 or 8%. So that is the contribution of, you know, getting people from website, getting them to the app store and then downloading the app, which is a slightly convoluted way for you to do it in the first place. I mean, it's an app, people are looking to discover apps on the phone, so you'd rather focus on improving discovery on the phone, uh, which is the app store, rather than getting them on the web and then from there to the store. It's, it's going to be difficult, right, if I'm, if I'm checking out my landing page on my desktop, I still, on Android it still works because it's connected, but on, for the iPhone, I will still have to separately write the name of the store, discover it and then download it. So it's even tough to measure in the case of an iPhone. Okay, uh, another question by Puneet, he says, how much difference is there in user behavior of iOS and Android? Do we devise different strategies? See, uh, it's tough to generalize because it depends on the category of the app, right? But uh, I think the biggest and the stark difference that's there is as far as the monetization goes. So on Google, I mean, most of the apps are making money through advertisements. Uh, there's hardly any money being made through in-app purchases or paid apps. Uh, whereas on Apple, the story is completely uh, the opposite. I mean, most of your purchases are, or revenue is coming in from in-app purchases and paid apps. And on iOS, uh, people are more amenable to uh, spending money to purchase apps or to un unlock features, not so much on Android. 
but in terms of user behavior of using the app i mean apart from the revenue aspect i i'm not sure i mean that's something that we'll have to get into the analytics of the app and then see whether retention is different session length is different etc okay uh, another question does the application size matter for aso so if there is a big size app will it affect my aso so not aso but user experience definitely so if you're looking to market to third world countries or places like or, or maybe places where the internet is not so prevalent or we don't have very good internet uh, speeds like in india then you would not want a very heavy app because then people would not be able to download it also the phone memory is limited right to whatever 30 gb 60 gb 10 gb depending on what phone you have so there is limited space that you're competing for so the lighter the app the better it is but not from an aso standpoint right uh, now shashank says you mentioned about checking the data of the number of times an app is viewed and the and comparing it with the number of downloads so where right. does one find this data on the itunes connect developer portal for apple and on the google play developer console for android we have an app analytics section in both of these where you can go in and see okay um moving on to the next question uh pudit says when we run non organic app install campaign for example cpa cpi how can we identify if the traffic is coming from incent or non incent source you will know if it's incent or non incent because you are the one who's running the campaign why would somebody else uh, uh, do that um, and the dashboard will tell you from the incent campaign how many downloads are there also on apple and google uh, there are different uh, there's a section called sources that that tells you that but it's not entirely accurate but but it tells you plus there are these analytics tools out there that can measure it for you and tell you okay uh, moving on to the next question by sabrish he says what are the main reasons for uninstallations of an app or oh, what are the, some of the reasons for high uninstall rate i think the number one user uh, reason would be the apps uh, performance uh if it's crashing or uh if it's not working as it should as it's intended to uh the other reasons could be in them if they downloaded uh an app thinking it was something else and it ended out to be something else so those could be a couple of reasons okay or perhaps uh, the board was not using it sorry Akhil, there are quite a few questions coming in. Uh, a lot of them on similar lines. So, if you could just summarize again on the uh, tools used to track different things, and uh, if you could just also mention some of the free tools and paid tools, because we have several questions around the same thing. Sure. So, uh, I'm assuming that by tools they mean the ones needed to check the traffic and difficulty scores. Exactly. So, uh, exactly. So, so I mentioned a few. There's one called Sensor Tower, which I use a lot. uh there's another one called mobile action i just uh, go up to the slide where i mentioned all this there's another one called mobile dev hq right here it's been acquired by a company called tune uh there's another one called priori data p r i o r i there are actually a bunch of them but i would say sensor tower and mobile action are the top two all of them have free plans that allow you to track one app with a limited number of keywords but if you have multiple apps or if you're looking to do a lot of keyword analysis then you will perhaps need to go in for a paid paid uh, plan paid subscription plan but otherwise all of them offer a free package that you can use for free okay um is there any standard app engagement checklist that you refer to app engagement checklist yeah uh, so you... chandan says is there any standard app engagement checklist that he could refer to so if if you know of a guide or something you know that he can go back and check no i'm not sure could you ask him what what app engagement metrics is he looking for i mean are the analytics based then there are analytics tools that can tell him uh, he'll have to create events i mean at the end of the day what you want to know is how are people using your app right and that's going to be very very a uh, specific to your app how somebody would use a game is very different from how they would use a health and fitness app which is very different from how they would use a business app so so the user journey and the engagement will have to be created customized to your app uh, uh, by events that you feel are important for instance sign up or the first purchase 
or you know if it's an e-commerce app then adding something to cart so that's something that will have to logically come out from you know from your own thought process by looking at the app you have right chandan so please do elaborate uh, moving on to the next one so he says in one of our app uninstall rate is higher than the install rate but still our install on active devices is increasing can you suggest what could be the reason so the uninstall rates are un so higher could, yeah i understood so it could possibly be that as in uh, the uninstalls are fast catching up with the increase in the active device number and that should in some days come down if this has been happening for a really long time then i wonder how that's possible uh, but if it's a recent phenomenon where your uninstalls have started increasing and and are more than your installs uh, then it's perhaps it will take it some time before your active install figure starts to decline so eventually it will have to okay um i think we can wrap up now akhil uh, guys those of you are asking for the recording and the presentation they both will be shared with you very soon uh, by next week sometime and other than that akhil's details are right here on the slide please do feel free to reach out to him for very specific questions that you have and do tell him what app you have actually um yeah so akhil thank you so much for taking this session and i'm sure a lot of people found it very useful because we got so many questions and i hope you enjoyed it as well great i i hope yeah i absolutely did and i hope uh, the audience also found it useful and and uh, got some takeaways from it and and thanks shivani again for the great opportunity and for making this happen no worries thank you so much akhil for another awesome pre awesome webinar actually and thank you all for attending the session looking forward to seeing you all again at the next one okay bye bye great. everyone thanks. Bye. Bye.